Hi, I'm Liam, here to tell you a bit about the recently updated MPLAB AI Coding Assistant extension for VS Code. It's got a bit of a new look, and now with agent mode and MCP servers, this update brings huge benefits to those looking to work in some more integrated AI workflows. And still great for anyone looking for more reliable and grounded AI help with our microchip devices. Let's take a look. Quick recap here. When you load up VS Code, if you don't already have it installed, you can search for this MPLAB AI Coding Assistant extension. It's this one here. If you need our documentation or developer help website, there is a link right here in the README as well. You can download the extension on its own, but it's best if you download it with the MPLAB extensions pack. You can find that one here if you just search for MPLAB, and you can see it's included right here. And then to open up the coding assistant, you click this microchip logo here. You can also right click, move to second sidebar. That's what I use. And if you ever lose it in the future or you don't see it, you can always use Control Shift P and focus on view command. That should bring it up wherever you have it docked. I'll add as a note here, if this is your first time and you've just downloaded the extension, you'll see a welcome window asking for an API key. There are instructions for how to get that and how to get set up here in the first minute of this video. Also covers some of the basic uses there, or you can always check out our developer help website, that link I showed earlier for help in getting set up. If you don't get the welcome screen, but you still need to add your API key, you'll just need to update or edit the agent's config file, but more on that in a little bit. All right, back to the AI coding extension. The new stuff is going to be here in this side view and specifically this mode dropdown where you can select agent mode. This is where we start to get into the new features. So agent mode specifically uses the tools and MCP servers available to do work based on the prompt. This is like chat mode plus tools enabled, and that means it opens a whole bunch of functionality. With agent mode and tools, we can now work within the open project or workspace and get files, add context, edit or create files, etc. These tools can help to fill out the query context for you if you don't specify enough info explicitly in the prompt and help to apply changes or suggestions on your behalf. And it's not just with the built-in tools, but also our MPLAB docs MCP server. Like before, these server tools can get data sheets, videos, projects, etc., from our docs server and from MPLAB Discover. That's our content search tool. You can check it out at discover.microchip.com. Give a quick shout out there. Again, this tool use is automatic and only in agent mode. It will determine which tools to run, what it needs to go find, in order to answer the prompt correctly, all on its own. And that means if you're more specific with your prompts, you can help guide which tools you want the agent to use or check with first. So just using terms as data sheet versus compiler user's guide or EVB user's guide within the prompt itself can help you achieve this. We should have a little help section in the developer help with some phrases to help trigger these tools if you want to reference that. I'll also try to include a quick screenshot here as well. Now, what are all these tools you may ask? Well, let's take a look first at the MPLAB docs MCP server tools. These are going to be similar to the context adders we used to have. This MCP server is already included by default in MPLAB AI Coding Assistant. There is the ability to add more tools or your own tools with your own MCP servers. You can do that here with this UI button. Uh, and then you can also use the MPLAB docs MCP server in any other AI coding assistant. The config may look a little different, but details I'll throw up on screen and are also available on our developer help website. Here, the tools available you see are example projects, videos, evaluation boards, data sheets, EVK user's guides, and compiler's user's guides. A uh, quick example here, using the example projects tool, this will go out and query MPLAB Discover and find example projects for the device that you specify in the prompt or that you provide in previous context, and then link them here for you to go check out. Similarly, using the data sheets tool based on the device part number, it will go and fetch the data sheet from our docs server and then use that to provide you specific block diagrams or register bits, whatever it was that you asked for in the prompt. You can toggle these tools between a few different behaviors. These are automatic, ask first, and exclude. In agent mode, our default is pretty much this ask first. 
What that means is the response will just pause until you accept to use a given tool. You can either click the continue button or press control plus enter, and then it will go use that tool or perform that action. If that's editing or creating a file, it will do that. If it's getting details from a parts data sheet, it will go fetch those details. If you instead choose the automatic mode, that means no pause. And instead, it just uses the tool to make changes or to fetch the context whenever it decides using a tool is required. You can customize this as well for each tool and have some as automatic and some set as ask first. That's up to your preference. A quick note here, when you first add your API key and do set up initially, you may also need to refresh this MPLAB docs MCP server to get it started. If you don't see them showing up here in the tools section, you can just click this icon for MCP servers and then click the refresh wheel on the right side. Also, we keep scrolling past these, but these are the built-in tools. So these aren't MPLAB or Microchip specific, right? But they are sort of the standard tools that help you work within the workspace better as well. So worth a quick mention here. These include file search, read, edit, create, etc. You have global search, grep search, uh, run terminal commands. That's a nifty one. But again, you can see the different built-in tools here, and you can toggle the different behaviors here as well. All right, that's most of the new AI and MCP server features, but there are a few other things I want to highlight before we go on. The first is this local agent switching. So up at the top right of this side view is this dropdown where you can switch between the microchip MP lab agent and a local agent option. The local agent is great for use of commercial models like Gemini, OpenAI, Claude, and others. And importantly, there are separate config files for each agent. So that's this cog icon. It opens a YAML file. This is the config file where you can add custom prompts, new models, adjust roles, add rules, and importantly, update the API key for our chatbot or the MCP server info for ours and for other servers. If you need to mess with any of that, it'll all be here. I did just mention rules. So rules are something you apply to a prompt whenever you submit a query. There's this new UI button for adding rules. Uh, there's a little pencil icon here. This is the project level custom rules. So that's going to add a folder and a file for you within the workspace. You can see an example of a rule here as well. But there is more in the agent's config file. That's towards the bottom of this section here for more like uh, global rules. So these will apply across all your projects whenever you use the agent anytime you submit a prompt. This can be super useful in cases like applying coding standards or configuring response output if you have MISRA rules you want to check against and such. Although they aren't new, we still have the chat and edit modes still available. So quick comments on those. In chat mode, this is the typical chatbot style interaction. Not much has changed here from how it used to work. You can still use slash or at commands to add custom prompts or add context, and control plus L to add any of the highlighted code to the side view as context. And then with edit mode, this is the inline edit feature. And there are a little bit of changes here. It's now on the right side. I think it used to be up at the top near the command palette. But you'll see above it the code to edit those are the lines you're looking to change. And then you enter your prompt here. That's for what you want to do to edit the code or for what it is that you want to change. If you want to update the lines to edit, you just highlight and press Control i on the section that you want to use. And then last but not least, there is still the autocomplete feature. It's easy to see. It's the same as before. It's a bit like a beefed up IntelliSense for your IDE. Not much has changed here. Again, as you start typing, it will try to guess and complete the line and the next few lines based on the surrounding lines of context. And then you can just press Tab to accept an autocomplete suggestion. OK, with all the features and modes out of the way, the last thing I wanted to go over is just a couple of quick FAQs or tips for working with our AI extension. The first is refreshing to use a new session. So this is good for queries with lots of files to refresh the context or if it feels like things are getting a little slow. You can always press this plus button up at the top, and that starts a new session with the full context length available. This is what makes it good for complex or multi-file queries. As you ask follow-up questions, right, it uses and refers to the previous prompts and responses and includes them as context. And this reduces the available space for new files. 
After multiple follow-up questions, the context length slowly gets exhausted. So if it's a new question, topic, or concept, or if you're about to reference multiple different files, always consider just starting a new session. If you find you're getting access key errors or no response, it's likely due to an API key error. We have a short troubleshoot guide on our developer help page for this towards the bottom, but you'll also want to refer to the agent's config file just to check on that. If you're having any issues with GitHub Copilot, so you use Control L to open the side view and you see chat, or maybe you see both Copilot and AI Coding Assistant, or one when you expect to see the other, there are a couple of pretty simple fixes here. You can disable Copilot chat in the VS Code settings or any of the keybinds that share that same side view and shortcuts. I think you can also change in VS Code and that should help to fix the issue. And then lastly, just as a note, always take a bit of time to review the code that you generate with AI. <sighs> it was a lot to cover, but that's all for today on the updates to our AI Coding Assistant extension. If you're looking for more info about MPLAB tools in VS Code, you can check out some of these videos here covering the MCC extension we also recently released. Go ahead and try out the updated MPLAB AI Coding Assistant extension today, and thanks for watching.